Hey now everybody, Jamie here, and today's list is one that I dreamt up recently because I heard an announcement that made me very excited and a lot of other people as well. Gale Force 9 has gotten the rights to bring back the original Dune board game. This has been gone and out of print for so long and people have been clamoring for this game and they finally got the license. Some years ago, Fantasy Flight Games tried to get the license but couldn't get the intellectual property. They had the rights to the game but not Dune. So they rethemed it to Rex, which is their Twilight Imperium universe. Now I own Rex, I love Rex, and I play it quite often and really dig it. But knowing that Dune was the original intellectual property, you can see it all over that game. Like every mechanism feels like Dune, but it's not Dune. Well now it's finally coming back and I can't wait to get a hold of a copy. So I decided I'm gonna make a list of five games that I really would like to see come back in print that I think the world deserves. So let's get on with the list. Chaos in the Old World. So I'm starting off with a softball here. This is not a game that's all that old and you probably can still find copies of it on eBay, on you know maybe on the Board Game Geek Marketplace, all those different places. It's not that old but it's not in print. Fantasy Flight Games, Games Workshop, they split up. They're not making games in the Warhammer Fantasy universe and the Warhammer 40K universe anymore. And that's sad because I'm telling you, Eric Lang designed a fantastic masterpiece of a game in Chaos in the Old World. Now, everybody loves Blood Rage. Blood Rage has come out from Simon recently, and that is a game that's based on Chaos in the Old World. It's actually based on two different games. Midgard and Chaos in the Old World sort of got together, had a baby, which is Blood Rage. Now, Blood Rage is a great game, but I gotta tell you, I like Chaos in the Old World better. And it has nothing to do with the fact that the intellectual property is Warhammer Fantasy, and I just happen to be a huge Warhammer Fantasy fanboy. I actually don't care if it's that theme anymore. The gameplay is where this game is at. Now it has the same mechanisms as Blood Rage, where you're, you know, in Blood Rage, it's rage. You have that, that resource that you're managing to take actions. And this one, you have the same thing in power. You have to put your dudes on the board. You're moving your dudes around. You're corrupting the land. You're playing spells. Spells is actually one of my favorite things about this game, because each territory on the board has two slots for spell cards. And you can play two cards there, or all the players collectively can play at least two cards in each one of those territories, which changes how things interact in that board in some capacity, the spell cards that you're casting. Really love that concept. So you're actually affecting the land with your magics of being these old gods. And I also love the progression concept. They have these dials that are actually built into the board, which probably isn't the best way to do a board game because it's hard to expand. They've managed to do it anyway. But those dials are progression. So as you do things throughout the game, these dials will advance and give you new abilities and new powers and upgrade yourself. It's really awesome. You can actually win the game by getting to the end of your dial. Love that concept. This game is superb. The gameplay and the mechanisms and the design of this game are superb. Now, where I think this game needs to go in a reprint is it needs to be overhauled. I don't care if they take the old world theme right out of it. Kind of like if it was there because I kind of like the old world. I like the old world. But if they change it to any other theme, whatever. The gameplay is great. I just don't like the components, the miniatures are garbage. Uh, I don't like the way the board looks. Now, a lot of people have a problem with this stretch skin kind of horrific looking board. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not offended by it. I'm offended that it's ugly. It just isn't pleasant to look at. I want a board that's pleasant to look at. The cards don't have the greatest of graphic design, that kind of stuff. I wanna see this come back in a really good production with beautiful artwork, beautiful board, better components, but still retain what made it great. The spell casting, the, the progression dials, the way that every all, all of the different old ones have a different way to win the game. They're, they have different uh, you know abilities that sort of push you in a direction of a strategy, but you can break that strategy pretty easily to win in any way. Chaos in the Old World is a fantastic game that needs to come back in a better form than it is now. Well, it's out of print, so there is no form right now. Chaos in the Old World's great. Check it out if you can. Hopefully, somebody brings it back. The Omega Virus. Now, I will admit that I have never played the Omega Virus. I wish that I would have played the Omega Virus. I, I never grew up having this game in my wheelhouse. It was never around. No one, none of my friends had it. I didn't have it. I didn't even know it existed. I actually learned about this game from another YouTube channel that I absolutely love that typically doesn't have anything to do with board games, Cinemassacre. 
He does the angry video game nerd, but he also does a series called Board James, where he reviews old, like, kind of games that we grew up with as kids. You gotta check it out. Board James is a fantastic series. As a matter of fact, if you watch from beginning to end all his board game reviews, there's a story that plays out, and it gets pretty wild, so check it out. But I digress. The Omega Virus is one that I want to play. I want to play, and I want it to be brought back in a form that's more modernized, because I can tell that maybe it's not quite good enough for today's hobby sensibilities in board gaming. The same kind of thing that Restoration Games does with Fireball Island, and coming up with Return to Dark Tower. Dark Tower is an old board game that probably wasn't that good, they're bringing it back with some really good designers on board that are gonna make it more modernized. And I wanna see the Omega Virus in that form. The Omega Virus is a game where basically there is a virus that infects a space station's computer. And you're the dudes that are running around the space station trying to get rid of this virus. You're collecting all these different key cards and different items that are gonna help you kill off this Omega Virus. You have to have key cards to get into certain places and you're slotting them into this different things. And all the while, there is an electronic computer in the middle of the board that is trying to humiliate you. He's making fun of you the entire time. You're trying to defeat him. This game looks absolutely awesome. I mean, it's so colorful and it's very, very like 80s and 90s, super colorful. And the miniatures actually look pretty cool. The little spacesuit guys and they have backpacks that you put your weapons in and stuff. It's a really neat game that I think if a company like Restoration Games would bring this back, they could really modernize the mechanisms to make it better for us today as gamers, but also allow the, our kids to sort of join us to play this type of game. This would be the perfect game. This game would draw in kids like crazy because of all the crazy, you know, the, the computers making fun of you and making noises and you're running around the board as fast as you can, you're slotting in things. And us as adults would love that too. It looks like such a fantastic game. I wanna play the old one, but I really want a new version to come back, modernized and beautiful. Omega Virus, let's do it, Restoration Games, bring it back. Rococo. So we're doing a complete 180 here. So we went from the Omega Virus, which was a wild run around space game, and we had chaos in the old world with the old gods destroying everything. We're going straight down to the bottom with a, with a solid Euro game that has been out of print for far too long. Now, let's address the theme first off. The theme is that you're a tailor, and you're making dresses and suits to put them on the nobles, to send them to the ball, and you're hoping that people will see your pretty dresses and suits at this ball, and you score points for doing that. I gotta say that a lot of people make jokes, including myself on many occasions, that a game about making dresses isn't that fun. But that's a stupid statement because Rococo is beautiful. This is a beautiful game. This is a beautiful design. The artwork is gorgeous and the gameplay is absolutely engaging. This game, it's a crime that this game is not on the market anymore. Uh, basically what you're doing is you have all these different dress patterns and suit patterns and you're trying to collect different resources that you need to be able to create them. And once they're created, they're sold to the, the nobles that are you're trying to get into the ball and you're trying to get them into prime positions, right? There's different floors. It's, the board is a big building uh, that is the ballroom essentially. And you're trying to get them in the prime position so that you'll score the most points because the most people are seeing your dresses and your suits. And by the end of the game, you're trying to get them to the roof because there's going to be a fireworks show. And if you have your clothing on the roof during the fireworks show, you get most of the prestige. Uh, this game doesn't sound like an exciting game. It doesn't sound like, you know, space stations and robots and, and you know, whatever the first one was, gods killing, you know, corrupting the land and killing all the people off. I mean, that's kind of like a super exciting kind of theme, you know, when you think of high adventure and that kind of stuff. This one's not high adventure. This one's down and dirty. You're just a worker trying to get by and bake the best dresses you can. But I'll tell you, that theme, despite it not being exciting, is pleasant. And not everything has to be all crazy and fired up and, and adventurous and wild. Sometimes pleasant is fun. That's why I like the game Wingspan, because the game is just such a pleasure to play. It's beautiful and it makes you feel good going into it and coming out of it. And Rococo is the same way. It's just a fun game. It's a fun experience. It's a pleasurable experience. It doesn't have to be killing and shooting and blowing up things all the time. 
This theme is amazing, and it really bleeds through in the mechanisms. Euro games are notorious in years past of not having very good theme, but Rococo, for an older game, has an absolutely amazing theme. I love this game. The strategies are very difficult. There's a lot of stress in this game where you're trying to put together the best things you're getting, and you're trying to get to the right places, you're racing people to get to the right places, you're trying to get musicians in there and decorations in the ball as well. There's a card management, hand management, trying to build a good deck of different workers. You know, basically your cards are your journeymen and your masters that are working on these dresses with you. Uh, there's just so many good me mechanisms in this game and such a, a, an amount of strategy to it. This is a gorgeous game and it's an absolute crime that it's not in print now. But Eggerspiel was the original publisher of this game. And Plan B Games has bought Eggerspiel. So they're putting out Eggerspiel's games at this point. And this one might be one that's on the horizon to be reprinted. They got the Great Western Trail they're doing. They got the Century Series. You got Reef. Lots of great games. This one is one that is ripe to be brought back. And I really hope that Plan B is paying attention and working on getting this game back into the hands of the gamers because it's a crime that they don't have it. Rococo is a wonderful game. Man of War. Now, a lot of you probably don't know this game. This is a Games Workshop game that was years and years and years ago and has been defunct for so long, you can't really even find collections of these miniatures anymore. This is a nautical miniatures game set in the old world of Warhammer, same as the Chaos in the Old World game. But this one is nautical miniatures. You have ships and, and submarines and steamships and all kinds of crazy stuff. You're playing it on a board, on a big blue board, and you're sailing your ships around, firing cannons at each other, casting spells, sea monsters, pop up and attack you. This game is, is, is wonderful. Now, this is a weird one for me because, uh, you know, the Omega virus I never played before, Rococo and Chaos in the Old World, obviously I have. This is a game that I have played, but I've never played the actual game. Because one year at Origins, long ago, probably eight, 10 years ago, I saw it being played on a table and I was like, oh my God, what is this? I love nautical themes. I love games like Nemo's War and Merchants and Marauders, love them. And this game just jumped right off the table at me. I was like, I have to, I have to have this game. Where do I get this game? Oh, it's long out of print, man. You're never gonna get this one. But the guy taught me how to play. Well, I went home and I searched the internet, found the rule book. I went out to the craft store and bought balsa wood and craft beads and I built ships. I built all the ships that I could and we played this game for years with my junky uh, ships that I built myself because this game is so amazingly good. If you like naval combat, this is kind of a wild fantasy version of that with spells flying all over the place and crazy things happening. Man, and it's just so much fun. I, I'm a sucker for anything nautical, and this game, it's a crime that it does not exist anymore. Now, they did bring back some form of it. Games Workshop brought out Dreadfleet a few years ago, and Dreadfleet is a standalone box that is a nautical miniatures game in the old world of Warhammer, and yes, it's similar. It has a vibe of it, but the game mechanisms are all different. You can't build fleets. You just play with individual ships or, or two or three ships, and you go through scenarios and things. Love the game. If you look at my top 50, it's really highly rated. Love Red Fleet, but it is not Man of War. Man of War is the game I want, and I want it back, and I don't think I'm ever going to get it back because I don't think Games Workshop makes a lot of money off of nautical miniatures games, uh, which is unfortunate. I think I'm in a minority in loving nautical miniatures, uh, but... This is one that I want back. Please bring it back. Somebody, Games Workshop, do it. I want Man of War back. Magic Realm. All right, so the last one is the biggest, the craziest, the game that I've never played before, but I would absolutely die to have this game back again. Magic Realm is a game that was designed and uh, published in 1979. And this game is a huge, complex fantasy adventure game with treasure and monsters and warriors and wizards and spells and everything that you have come to know about any sort of fantasy adventure. And the kind of the concept of the game is there's this ancient civilization that's long dead and it's underneath the ground and you're going around 
and you're trying to unearth all this treasure while you're fighting the monsters, you're leveling your character up with items and spells and things. And it is a modular game in that all the tiles are modular and all of the spells and, a bit, and, and items are all different all the time. So every time you come back and play, the treasures are different places, the board looks different, your character is all different because he has all different items and spells and things. So this is a big monstrous game where it has tons of stuff, tons of monsters, tons of spells, tons of treasure, everything. And I've talked to people who have thought about bringing this game uh, back, uh, publishers who have thought about bringing this game back, and they've all said, it can't be done. It's just too much. It's too complex. It's too much stuff in the box. I can never make money off of this thing. It's crazy. Well, that was five, six years ago that I had that conversation, and I think that that information is wrong now, uh, because in this day and age of Kickstarter and the way Kickstarter operates, uh, there are people out there that will throw down $400, $500 to get an all-in pledge of a gigantic, massive game with with content for years. You're talking like Gloomhavens and Folklore the Afflictions and all kinds of games where there's so much meat in that box, you could not buy a game for three years and you'd be fine because you can continue to play that game over and over and over again. And that's where Magic Realm comes in. Somebody needs to come back and they need to modernize this game. Now, I know a lot of people out there are gonna be mad about that because they probably love this game from when they were kids and they want it to stay the same. I think it needs to be modernized because I don't trust the game from 1979, most of them. This game could come back in a, in a in still a complex and still hugely monstrous amount of content in the box, but modernized with wonderful artwork, great components, maybe miniatures, all kinds of cards and stories for days. I would love to see this Magic Realm game come back in print with a big production. I would throw down $300 for this game. I would do it. You got Kingdom Death Monster, people are throwing down $600 or whatever for a pledge of that. This game could be that. And I guarantee you anybody who kickstarts this game and does it right with all the right stuff, they're gonna make millions off this thing, at least on Kickstarter. I don't know if it'll sell on the shelves for a couple of hundred dollars, but this game can come back and can succeed in this day and age. And I hope somebody does it because Magic Realm just looks like a blast to play. And I can't wait for somebody to do it so I can have it. I want Magic Realm. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me today in my list of out of print games that the world deserves to have. And of course, I want them too, so it's a bit of a selfish list. But come on back next time when I bring you another list that I dreamt up because I heard an announcement somewhere. And until next time, have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.